So I remember being around five years old. Uh, we were coming home one day from daycare, my brother and I. Uh, and I remember looking out of the front window and seeing my dad riding his motorcycle. And uh, while he was riding, he was kind of swaying back and forth in the lane. And I was just, I said it out loud actually. I was like, why is he doing that? And in that moment, I didn't get any answer. But after riding for a couple months, I, I get why he did it. Uh, so fast forward from that moment, um, I, my dad got me my first uh, a little electric dirt bike. Um, and I had like a top speed of like 17 miles per hour. Um, but that was my first experience ever with a motorcycle. Uh, and I remember I loved every minute of it. We would take it up uh, to Mary Daly Field and I would ride it around in the mud. And I, it was so much fun. Um, so then fast forward from there, uh, I found myself on YouTube uh, watching guys who put GoPros on their helmets and on their bikes. Uh, they had taken their bikes up to uh, the mountains wherever they lived, or the track. Um, and these guys, they were leaned over with their knees, dragging on the ground while they're going through the turns. They're going 150 in the street on the track. And I just thought to myself, oh man, I gotta do this at some point in my life. Um, so I remember first I had just asked my dad if I could ride, and like any parent, the answer was no. So, and I had to figure out, you know, okay, how can I get it so I can actually ride? Um, and then it was time to pick our senior project. At first, I had no clue what to do. And then <coughs> and the idea popped into my head. I was like, oh, wait. If I say I'm going to ride for my senior project, I, mean, I could get a bike right now. I wouldn't have to wait for after college or whatever. And I could just do it. After a little bit of convincing, he let me. Um, I also had to convince the school, which... That was, was pretty hard too, but they, they were okay with it after a while. Um, so the most important thing um, when you're first getting into motorcycling is your gear. Um, so your helmet, obviously, you have to protect your head. Um, a jacket will help you if you fall and you're sliding and you, know, you don't want to have your skin on the pavement. That sucks. So it hurts a lot of stuff. Um, and gloves. Your hands are always, whenever you fall on a bike or whatever, your hands are always, it's just a reaction, always the first thing to go down. So it's nice to have some gloves to protect your hands. Um, so the next part uh, for me was actually picking the bike, uh, which at first was pretty hard. Um, you could take into account money and your own skill level. Um, so I, I went through a number of different options before my mentor suggested that I get this bike, which is a Honda CBR 600RR. Uh, I believe that's the bike that he started on. Um, and it's been great. It's it's pretty powerful, and you'll probably hear around that a 600 probably isn't the best thing for someone starting. Uh, but this bike was actually fairly easy to um, start riding on, although I did learn initially from MSF. Um, I rode a 250. Um, but uh, otherwise, it was it was nice to start on this bike. Um, so another thing that's very important to a motorcyclist is traction. Um, so on a motorcycle, you have your front brake, which is up here, and that has about 70% of your braking power. Um, and the rest comes from the rear brake here, uh, which doesn't do a lot. Um, so mostly you're braking with the front brake. Um, and riding these types of motorcycles and keeping traction and all of that is something that's actually pretty hard to do. And even for a company like MSF, who teaches a whole lot of people how to ride, um, you know, even they, even they will teach some things that's not necessarily true. One of the main ones being, um, there's a saying when, you're, when you start riding, you'll always hear this, get all of your braking done before you enter the corner. Um, and that is because when you're accelerating or when you're braking, the weight is transferred either to the back wheel for acceleration or the front wheel while you're braking. 
The front wheel, as you can see, is significantly smaller than the rear. That means that the front wheel will always have less traction no matter what. So if all of your weight is on the front wheel with less, with less traction, while you're turning, you're most likely going to lose traction. And that's why they tell you to finish your braking before you enter a turn. Uh, so I actually got the chance to hear a lecture from uh, the Yamaha Champions Riding School, and they teach a lot of guys who are now racing professionally. Uh, and one of the things they were talking about is this issue of braking and turn. Um, so when you're turning on a motorcycle, you have to lean the bike over. Um, it's not like a car, you don't have another set of wheels next to you to catch you when you turn. If you turn in a car, you turn the wheels that way, but your body you know, kind of leans this way. On a motorcycle, you don't want to do that because you're falling then. Um, <laughs> So you, you have to lean the bike over, and this, uh, this immediately reduces the traction. The tire, there's a bigger contact patch when the tire is flat like this. When you're leaned over like this, the, t the contact patch will maybe be about that big, and that's all you have to keep the bike from sliding. And when you're braking in a turn, one of the things that uh, the Yamaha Champion Riding School is talking about is you know, if you go onto the brakes too hard, and the front brakes is powerful, 70% of your braking power. If you go, if you get a handful of brake, you're most likely going to lock it up and you're going to lose traction. And that kind of looks like this. So yeah, the tire immediately, this is a pretty uh, slippery floor, but the tire, you know, if you make any quick changes to it, you'll lose traction immediately. But if you load the tire, so it's still leaned over, if you load the tire and slowly increase the pressure, I can put almost my entire body weight onto the tire, even though it's leaned over with only about that much action on the floor, which is slippery. So that's just one of the things that I learned um, from them. And hopefully, um, <coughs> if I go back uh, during the spring and get on the track, so they'll teach me how to actually apply that to a track. Um, so yeah, I'm going to play a video of myself up in the mountains, um, just so you guys know. The video, everything that I'm doing there is under the speed limit, um, that's, <laughs> for a number of reasons. It's not legal to go above it, obviously. Uh, also, road conditions are not usually as nice as track conditions. Um, so in the video, you'll see uh, some clips of MotoGP riders, they're the professionals who have accomplished the capability to ride above the level of the motorcycle. I'm still trying to keep up with the bike. Um, those guys are leaned completely over. They're braking very hard before the turn and a little bit during the turn. Uh, you probably won't notice it as much, um, but it's happening. Um, yeah. Thank you. 
Lending me her husband for countless times. Um, I'd like to then thank my mentors, uh, James Matashi, or Ms. Rappel's husband, uh, and Rashid uh, Wallace, who's helping me on the site. Um, I would like to thank my dad for, one, letting me do this as a project. Um, I'd like to thank him for driving me all over the world, it seems like, so Book for a bike. Uh, he took me up to the mountains a couple times. A pretty long drive. He took me one night we were in the city at like midnight taking pictures. Um, so I'd like to thank you for all your time and getting me into it. Um, I'd like to thank my class for being supportive. Um, you guys have always been great. Uh, I don't think I could have. Uh, Imagine myself anywhere else. Um, hopefully, I can give you guys some rides. Yeah. 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 I don't know where you put your feet, but one day. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank the school also for allowing me to do this. Uh, at first, I thought maybe I wouldn't be able to do it. It seemed kind of iffy uh, whether or not they would let me, but eventually they did. I'm happy about that. Um, yeah. What's the process for getting a motorcycle license versus getting normal, regular car driver's license? Um, so, one of the differences with getting a motorcycle license is um, MSF. Uh, and you can have your license to then you just go and you have to get your permit first, which you do have to do through the DMV. Um, but you can take a course through MSF, and if you pass the test uh, from there, then they'll give you your license. Um, and basically what that looks like is you'll do a lot of stuff in a parking lot, but you won't usually be on the street with a motorcycle. Um, or you'll do some slow speed turning and whatnot, which is the hardest thing to do on a motorcycle. Um, and if you can do that successfully, then I'll give you the license. 